What's up beautiful jellyfish, it's Tracy. Thanks a lot for watching my video. Um, this is like, I have so much stuff that I need to do. Like I have so many little things to do. I started student teaching recently, yesterday. This video, I have no idea when it's gonna be up. It's gonna be up like next week sometime. And like, it's so weird cause I have like a lot of work, but not homework. Like I, I give homework, like it's just, it's just weird. Um, but I'm really excited and but you know what? Something I have been really on top of is I've been really on top of YouTube videos recently. I've just been like filming, editing, uploading. Like I've done, that's good. That's good. I gotta get a move on on like this other, like the other hundreds of little things that I gotta do. So send me some luck and maybe some cat pictures too. That That's always appreciated. Cats are great. Or dogs or bunnies, just cute animals. Perfect. Snakes too. You know, hey, whatever. Okay. So Let's get into the video. I'm going to be talking to you guys about colors, mana rocks, and mana ramp today. And I've actually already done the first part of this video. I will link it down below. I did it. I actually didn't film it like that long ago. I feel like I filmed it like a couple months ago. But you know, um, videos are only so long and I don't want to talk for 30 minutes, even though I can. Um, I don't want to do that. So I want to divide these up. I usually limit myself to around like 10, sometimes fewer uh, things. So this is part two of this. And yeah, let's talk about these. These are really good EDH cards to think about because sometimes in EDH you're running like white, you're running like mono white and you're like, I really need ways that I can have access to get mana rocks and mana ramp to cast my higher mana sp cost spells. Awesome, let's get started. So the first card I wanna to talk to you guys about is Everflowing Chalice. This is a card that I actually haven't gotten the chance to play with simply because I run other things. But you know what, everyone's like, everyone has like their preferences on like what mana rocks and mana ramp they like. And you know what, do whatever you want. Um, This card is really, really good. What I like about it is that it's a card that works good in the early game. How many people like actually say like bless you when like someone sneezes to like your pets because I do that all the time. My cat sneezes and I'm like bless you midnight even though he like can't understand my language and like whatever. Um anyways, Everflowing Chalice. So card's really good. Card I haven't personally played with before, but I know a lot of people like it. It's a really good, pretty good early game card if card if you not like get it like turn one. Unless you like soaring turn one or whatever. But like, you know, the fact that it can be really good like late game, it, it's like okay late game, but it depends. If you're playing like dumb Eldrazi like colorless stuff, which that does exist, um, you know, Everflowing Child is definitely maybe a, a good thing to um, consider in it. So it's a, it's a good card. You can put as much or as little into it as you want and it still works. So I think that's why it's a flexible card that a lot of people like. Okay. The next card I'm actually going to be talking about, oddly enough, is a creature, um, and that is Oblivion Sower. Um, Oblivion Sower is really, really sweet. Um, it's a card that I really haven't gotten the chance to play, but I've seen other people use it, and the card's just nuts. First off, it's a 6 mana 5-8. Sweet, awesome, I like it already. And then on top of that, it's got this really sweet ability where your opponent exiles the top 4. Even if you don't get lands, guys, you exile the top 4 of their deck. Like, the lands part is, like, great, but it's not the only reason why this creature is just so amazing, because it's, like, um, it's just so good. Like, it's just so good. It's such a nice ETB thing, and then it's got such a nice body. Like, it's just so good. And you know what? Like, are the chances of you getting, like, four lands? Like, could you get them? Could you not? You know what? Like, it doesn't matter. You exile four cards. The thing's a 5-8. You can't really complain. The card's really good. Okay. Um, then we have Chromatic Lantern. Chromatic Lantern is good in any, like, three plus co color decks. If you're running three cards, you colors, you really need to invest in a chromatic lantern. I understand that that's nine dollars, and for some people, that's like a lot of money. It's like three hundred dollars. Like, listen, I get it. Um, but however, it's a really, really good card, and you just notice that your mana it just frees you up because you're like, oh my gosh, what if I like draw this card and it, like. I need this color mana to cast it, and if I don't, I lose. And then you're like, oh my gosh, that my mana all over the place, whatever. Chromatic Lantern is a really, really good way, you know, for you to like balance out your uh, mana. But something I will notice uh, uh, too is if you're running Chromatic Lantern with like mana um, cards like Cultivate, things like that, I always still make sure I get an even mix of my colors because someone can just straight up destroy your Chromatic Lantern. 
keep that in mind. Also keep in mind too that Chromatic Lantern taps for a mana, which is really relevant, and it's a mana of any color. There is a card, and the name of it is so slipping me right now, but I was actually thinking of getting it for um, five color. It's the green enchantment that does the same thing as Chromatic Lantern, but it's two mana, and it's green obviously. Um, and it doesn't tap for a mana. So like, I was like, yo, I want that, but then I was like, I just run Chromatic Lantern, and that card's like 20, and Chromatic Lantern is like nine, and I already had one, so it was like perfect. Um, so it's just, it's so, like, that card is only good in, like, a, green, a deck that run green, but Chromatic Lantern can be used in any color deck. It's just, it's, to me, it's just an absolute essential. I could even understand if you were running in two colors and you have one laying around, because I've had instances where, like, you're, you really need, like, a certain amount of, like, black sources or, like, something, and you really need that, and, you know, whatever. So, or you're running, like, a lot of colorless lands or something like that, and you need to make sure that you can get, you know, whatever. Card's good. I, I love it. It's one of my, like, top staple cards for, um, like, mana fixing and stuff. Then we have a card that I know a lot of people run, and that is Darksteel Ingot. And the reason why people run Darksteel Ingot is it's a three mana thing that makes you one of any color, which is really great, but it's indestructible. Guys, people are going to be blowing up your artifacts and enchantment. This isn't like Magical Christmas Land where all your stuff stays in the field all the time. That just doesn't happen. Isn't it weird like when you play like a lot of games of EDH and people kill things and then you play one game and like none of your stuff dies? I have played EDH games like that before where I have like no graveyard and it's like turn 20. And I'm like, guys, how do I have nothing in my graveyard? How have you not killed anything of mine? Like, how has nothing died? How is no like anything gone to the graveyard? Um, so... People are going to be playing Rex Age, Acidic Slime, um, other cards that blow up artifacts in terms like Bane of Progress. People are going to be running these things to get rid of your artifacts and your champions, or they run things like Oblivion Ring. Best card. Um, uh, Return to Dust, anything. Like, they run things to get rid of your artifacts and your champions, and Dark Sun it is instructable. So it doesn't care. Actually, this would... Return to Dust is Exile. Is that the one I'm thinking of? The one that's four meta? I think it says Exile. That card's really good. That card's so good. Yeah. But yeah, so like, if you someone, it stops there being a progress, and it gives you a mana of any color. So is it my absolute favorite? No, but I understand why people like it, and it's it's good. If you're playing in, like, a meta where people, like, eat, like, are, like, must blow up all your things, that type of thing. Okay, then we have Thought Vessel. I'm a huge fan of this card. Um, sometimes, guys, let's be real here, Reliquary Tower isn't enough. If you're playing, like, a lot of card draw and, like, you really need something else out there, Thought Vessel is, like, awesome. It's, like, Spellbook, but just absolutely so much better because it taps for a mana. Um, a lot of times you'll have Reliquary Tower, guys, and people just ghost quarter it. People, like, get rid of it so that you have no maximum hand size. I'm not gonna lie, like, one time I remember I was playing a game of VDH and... I, someone had so many cards in their hand, so I ghost quartered their reliquary tower, and then I had all the cards that go into their hand, and then I bajuka bogged them. Guys, that was sweet. They had, like, so many cards in their hand from, like, something. Like, Blue Sun Zenith or whatever, and I was like, uh, cool, you're gonna discard those, and then they're gonna go to exile. It was really great. Um, so yeah, Thought Vessel to me is just, is super good. It adds a mana to your pool, but it also has that really sweet ability where you have no maximum hand size. Overall, I think it belongs in every single deck that draws, like, a lot of cards. It's like, any, like, blue color, it just, just needs to go in there. And on top of that, it's like a mana rock. It's just so good. Alright, awesome. Then we have Commander Sphere. Really good if you're running, like, three. We're going to be getting four color commanders soon. Guys, I'm so stoked. I'm so excited to like start doing videos like when four color commander stuff gets released. By the way, I know I, this is going up like a little like late. It's going up like next week sometime, but like I haven't done anything on conspiracy and I feel really bad. I like, I like guys, like I just started student teaching. Like things have been like a little bit crazy and like I would have had to film a video like every day and like I just we just didn't get there. So like, and also too, I'm really not that good at like conspiracy stuff like it's just because it's not something that I, I've drafted conspiracy once before so I'm not like super good at it and I feel like this time was a lot of like monarch things and I was like I don't know how good that stuff is to me it was just like I feel like I just didn't know enough about the set which is totally fine I'm, I have no problem with anything that I like don't know how certain things work so um yeah I was just like you know what we're just gonna like leave that there but I'm really stoked for Kaya and I'm probably stoked for other cards in there too I just don't remember what they are right now but I'm really stoked for the planeswalker the black and white one I'm it's she's going super fun. She's really good. I'm really stoked. Anyways, Commander Sphere. I don't know how I got off on that tangent. Commander Sphere. 
is really good. It adds one amount of any color to your pool, so oh, I remember how I got on the topic because four colors. So if you're doing three, four, five colors and you need, you know, your mana base is really sensitive and you run a lot of mana rocks, Commander Tree is really good for that. Also, what I love about this is that it's not a tap ability to sack it, so you can like tap it for mana and then sack it to draw a card, which I think is like really awesome. Um, sometimes, like, it's really good when you can find cards that do like multiple things. So this card not only adds mana to your pool, you get to sack it to draw a card, which is awesome. Um, you'll notice actually too that I'm soon going to be filming a video talking about um, colorless card draw. I think my second part of that as well. And when I film that, like, a couple of months in the future or whatever, and like, I actually talk about a lot of these cards on here because a lot of these things provide mana and draw cards and that's just like really awesome. So Commander Sphere is just really good for that reason. It also adds one mana of any color to your pool uh, overall. Just a huge fan of great. Okay, then we have Worn Power Stone. And it's like so funny that like, I like don't run this card in any of my EDH decks. I really couldn't even tell you why, but I'm like, the, I, I should because the card is actually, I'm looking right now on a website and it's like two fifty. it's like $2 for this card. It's really good. So, you know, like nothing in life is better than like awesome magic cards that are not expensive. Let's be real here. Awesome foil magic cards that are not expensive is by far just the best. Okay, it's three mana. It comes in tapped. All right, whatever. You have so many things if you need to that untap artifacts, please. Um, but if not, whatever. You wait a turn cycle. Who cares? You just get to add two colors mana to your pool. It's like Soul Ring, but Soul Ring belongs in every deck. But like, you know, like... Soul Ring is one card. Like, everyone always talks about, like, these nuts EDH draws, like, oh, turn one Soul Ring. Guys, it doesn't happen that a lot, like, a lot. How many times are you mulliganing to get Soul Ring in your hand? Like, come on. Like, I don't even know, like, with some people, I just don't get it. But Worn Power Stone's, like, really good. It's a, it's a not as good version of Soul Ring. You're gonna run Soul Ring, but, like, you gotta run things other than that one card. So Worn Power Stone's really good. And I'm kind of like, I don't even know where I found this card, but I was like, I just need to put this in things because this card's like really sweet. Okay, um, I don't know why these went a little bit, like, I should have talked about this card with another one, but that's fine. Mindstone. Um, Mindstone is really sweet. I like it a lot. Um, it adds one to your pool, which is nothing fancy. It's two mana, which I really like. So getting like soul, <laughs> there I am. <laughs> there, I, I, what did I say? And I just talked about that. And then you, you turn one soul ring and then you turn one soul ring into Mindstone and then you Mindstone into the something that copies Soul Ring, and then you do something else. There's like that that one artifact that you can copy any artifact. But is that equipment? That may be equipment, actually. I'm not too sure. Okay, so it adds one mana to your pool, and then very similar to Commander Sphere, you know, you one mana and you get to sack it to draw a card. It's good in the early game, it's great in the early game, and it's good in the late game when you don't need mana, but you really need to draw cards. Especially if you're running, like, not blue and you like real or like green and you like really need to draw cards. Um, mine so is really good for that, so I like it. Again, two things in one, really good. Um, this specific card is for a specific type of deck, so it's not going to be applicable. But Blink Moth Urn is really good if you guys are running um like artifact themed decks. Like Duretti is flying everywhere. Someone actually just commented recently talking to me about Duretti. And I was like, a lot of people at my local games were played already, so it's not something that I want to play. But I, I just think it's really funny, like, when you guys, like, I don't know how to say this, but, like, when you guys, like, explain magic cards to me, like, I know what they do. I don't know, it's just, it's just, like, funny to me. Like, I don't get mad. I'm just, like, you guys, like, explain cards, and I'm like, oh, I know what that card does. Like, I, I don't know. But then there's some cards that you guys say, and I'm like, I've never heard of that card before. It's weird. Anyways. Um, Blink Moth Urn. If you're playing any sort of, like, artifact theme decks, you really need Blink Moth Urn in your deck, guys. I'm looking at the price right now. It's, like, $2. Why is every card on this website, like, $2.25? Okay, they're, they have other prices. I'm at this one specific card store website, and then I was like, what? That's weird. No, it's, other cards are different prices. They're just the two I looked at happen to have the same price. Okay. Blink Moth Urn. Really good. Um, it's kind of a really cool political card because, you know what, if you're playing like that heavy artifact deck and you, you have Blink Moth Urn so that like it taps for a mana at like the very least, which is really good. Um, yeah. And then you just get like a ton of mana like into your pool. But you know what? If other people are running artifacts, which guess what they probably are, they're probably running Soul Ring, you know, all these, this, a bunch of these like 
things, um, they're going to be running it so they may necessarily not want to get rid of it because they like the extra colorless mana. So it's a really weird but cool kind of political card that you can like definitely use to your advantage because people want to stop you from doing your thing but it's also helping them. So it's, it's kind of a cool thing. I like it. The last card for this video, I always get really sad when I get towards the end because then I have to stop talking to you guys and I get really sad, um, is Cage Sun. Cage Sun is really, really good in like monocolored decks. I don't think it's good in... I don't think it's good in like two and definitely not anything plus, but in one, in monocolored decks, Cage Sun is really good. I remember when I actually ran this card in Angel's EDH, but I, I felt like... I didn't get it early enough for it to be relevant, and my curve has actually gotten so much better. It's funny, is I don't even run like a Quicksilver Amulet in that deck, which like you'd think if I'm running like Angels, I would, but it's like sometimes it just, it doesn't do enough, you know what I mean? It gets me one creature in, but then I pay like, I don't know, it, to me it's just, it's sometimes it can be relevant, but my curve's gotten better that I like don't even need it anymore, and I, and I matter wrap in other ways, so it, it just, I don't need it. And that's like the same like with Cater Sun is I just don't need it anymore so I took it out but if you're like really struggling like you won't need to be doing multiple things in a turn and you really need like to add like you know color to your pool um yeah like I said I think it's just really good for yeah it's good for in monocolor decks it's just really good if you just need to do multiple things in a turn like if if, if there was something similar to Cage Sun that I could put in Super Friends like I would because Kate like in Super Friends I need to generate like so much mana so I could do like a ton of things um but there's really not but that would be really dumb so they shouldn't do that <laughs> guys can you imagine oh my gosh it'd be crazy just like that I would add like any color to your pool it kind of reminds me of like Lotus Cobra a little bit that card's great Oh my gosh, Lotus Girl was so sweet. Anyways, that was it, it, guys. That was it for talking about colorless mana, rocks, and mana ramp. Um, that's all I got. I gotta go do, like, a lot of work right now. But I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.